Hey guys, it's Paul from Where Nerdy is Cool. Uh, as you can see, I'm with my big friend, the F-14A Tomcat. Uh, I'm on a little bit of a trip. I'm over here in Palm Springs, California, and uh, today I'm visiting the Palm Springs Air Museum. It's an exceptionally cool spot if you're into military aviation. Uh, I was able to chat with a few of the volunteers here, so I've been putting together a cool video to give you an overview of this fantastic place. So stay tuned. I got a jet coming in landing. Ah. All right, here we go. Hello YouTube friends, I'm back. This is Future Paul. Been putting together this video for you on the Palm Springs Air Museum. I think you're gonna really like it, but before I get carried away talking about the museum, let me first of all say hello, my name is Paul. Welcome to my channel where nerdy is cool. If you're not a subscriber, hit the button down below and become one. Don't want you to miss any of my cool content. So that said, now I can get excited again. I am freshly back from Palm Springs, California. Got to spend uh, four days over there. Uh, my girlfriend had a work conference over there. I bought an airline ticket and tagged along while she was at the conference. I spent two days at the Air Museum and I had a fantastic time. The Air Museum has 29 aircraft. They range from World War II right up to the modern era. Um, God, where do I start? I mean, if you're big into military aviation or even history, you know, uh, of aerial combat, this museum is for you. Uh, I had a wonderful time talking to one of their docents, which is, I didn't know what a docent was, but it's basically, I had to look it up. It's a volunteer. And the people that are volunteers there, as well as the few employees they have, uh, are just extremely passionate about that museum. Uh, the aircraft they have, the stories they have, and uh, you know the history they represent. So if you are ever going to be in the Southern California area, Palm Springs especially, you need to check this museum out. Unfortunately, I don't have any coupon codes or anything like that to save you any money on admission, but I just want you guys to know that it is very well worth it. So that said, let's talk about some of the airplanes. So if you're into World War II, you can't, you can't help but not visit the P-51D Mustang. They have the B-17 Fortress, and they also have, oh God, I'm trying not to list them off too quick here. They got the P-47D Thunderbolt. Uh, they have the TBM Avenger. Uh, I believe it's the one that George H.W. Walker Bush flew in. Um, of course, he was a World War II veteran. Uh, they also have, uh, they got the Hellcat. Uh, they have the Wildcat. And the list goes on and on. They even have a Spitfire. They have a Spitfire Mark 14, very sharp looking airplane. So if you're not into the World War II, if you're more into the jets, you won't be disappointed because they have some amazing jet aircraft. So starting with, well, the early jet age, they have, uh, I think this uh, is a Panther F-89. I think I got that right. Uh, they also have the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the F-105 Thunder Chief. So back when we were getting into the uh, Vietnam War, uh, those guys were heavy in use for aerial uh, bombing. Uh, they have the F-100. Uh, that was our first uh, supersonic jet fighter that could fly supersonic straight and level. Uh, they have the F-86, of course, that was famous from the, uh, um, the war in, uh, in Korea. Oh, going on and on. My, one of my favorite airplanes of all, because I'm a big reader of Kelly Johnson, he designed the F-104 Starfighter, which they have one of. Um, Kelly Johnson also designed the SR-71. They don't have one of those on site, though, so that's okay. The F-104 is also known as the aircraft as the missile with a man in it. And as you can see, it's a very slim airplane. Those wings are, um, they're not razor sharp, but as you can see in the footage, I mean, they are very thin. I mean, at the wingtip, they're just over an inch and a half thick for, as best I could guess. So very thin wing. Um, Kelly Johnson talks about in his biography, the research they did to find out, you know, what size a, a wing would work as well as a, a flying tail. They uh, launched hundreds of uh, five inch rockets, testing all kinds of various designs. And uh, these airplanes uh, were some of the fastest coming off the assembly line back in the day. You don't see too many of them flying these days. This one is not a flying example, but uh, again, if you get an opportunity to see one up close, you just can't help but marvel at the sleekness of this aircraft. Moving on through the Vietnam era, there's also, uh, I, I also wanna make sure I give credit to the helicopters. 
Uh, back in the Korean War, they had like the MASH style helicopters. I can't think of the model Bell that was, but they have one of those hanging there. Uh, they have two Hueys, and they also have an AH-1 Cobra. And uh, so if you're big into the uh, helicopter gunships, you'll be pleased to see those guys. Uh, also from the uh, Vietnam era, there's also a MiG-21 over there, and I'm sure I'm missing out on a few other airplanes because there's just so many of them. Um, probably one of the stars of the show for me is obviously the F-14A Tomcat. Uh, they also have an EA-6B Prowler. They also have an F-4B Phantom. Uh, of course, that also served in Vietnam. But uh, the F-14, you just, if you haven't had an opportunity to see one up close and personal, you just can't believe what a massive airplane this thing is. I mean, the engines are so far spaced apart so they could accommodate the uh, advanced Phoenix missile, the uh, AIM-54. And uh, the, of course, the sad thing with the history of the Tomcats is that most of them have been uh, destroyed and ground up. Uh, with a handful going to museums and uh, the ones going to the museums have been thoroughly gutted because uh, Iran has several F-14s in their inventory because we sold them to them in the 70s and we want to make sure that uh, they do not have access to spare parts so uh, the military has been uh, removing those from those aircraft. So the handful that we do have examples of are definitely worth checking out. Another big thing that's going on for the museum is they will be receiving an F-117A Nighthawk in the near future. Uh, a couple of the docents were telling me, and there's also when you walk into the lobby, there's a display there saying that they'll be receiving one. And they mentioned that uh, it will be coming without, of course, the uh, uh, radar absorbing material on it. Uh, the nose and tail will be removed, so their shop will fabricate uh, you know, something that uh, obviously looks just like it, but uh, doesn't contain the technology. So exciting times for that museum as they raise money and accept donations to get that structure built. Uh, with the terms of the Air Force, from what I was told, in order to have that aircraft, it has to be sheltered, and uh, they're working on building that structure now. So, very cool on them. So I had an opportunity to meet one of the uh, docents slash volunteers uh, at the museum. His name is Ryan Hoover, and uh, he's a very enthusiastic uh, gentleman. Uh, he was telling me all about the museum, and I said, whoa, 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 hang on. I gotta get you on tape for this. And he was more than willing, so Ryan, thank you very much. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to roll that clip with Ryan talking about the museum and uh, you'll definitely be able to detect his passion and enthusiasm for not only the aircraft, but that facility they have. So here goes. All right, welcome. My name is Ryan Hoover. Uh, I am a docent here at the beautiful Palm Springs Air Museum in Palm Springs, California. Uh, we are one of the few living history museums in the world. We're considered around top or ten, top 10 or 15 in the world, uh, mostly because of the airplanes that we have that are flyable. Uh, this air museum started in 1996 uh, in Palm Springs, and we started with 14 original airplanes, all of which were flyable, uh, most of which are still in flyable condition, including this wonderful example of a P-51D model behind me, named Bunny. Uh, this airplane is uh, modeled after Lieutenant Colonel Bob Friend, who was one of the Tuskegee Airmen, one of the original class Tuskegee Airmen. This is the exact paint scheme that he flew. Uh, he also flew P-47s, but we decided to make our P-51 after his. He was a local guy in the valley, very nice gentleman, a good friend of the, uh, the museum who just unfortunately recently passed away about a year ago. So we miss Bob, but we're keeping his spirit alive with this airplane. Uh, this museum currently has five airplanes. We fly regularly and we sell rides in four out of the five of them. We also have one of them being a T-33 trainer jet, which was a Korea War and Vietnam era training jet. Uh, it has two seats, so we just sell riding that. If you have a cool $5,000, you could probably go for a ride in it. But most people, it's just fun to look at. Um, here on the wonderful Palm Springs Airport, we are in a perfect place with the mountains behind us, the backdrop, the scenery. Uh, flying these airplanes in and out of this uh, museum is an absolute treat. Uh, we cater to everybody who was in World War II all the way to the littlest kids. Uh, we just want you to come in, be able to put your hands on these airplanes, want you to smell the fuel, smell the oil, really experience what the men were dealing with that were dealing in these airplanes. Uh, the wars were not a lot of fun, but it was a necessary evil, and these were the tools that were used uh, on all sides. We're not telling the story anything from our side. It's pretty much every side of the war. So 
this is uh, it's a pretty special place and I really enjoy volunteering here and I hope I can for much longer. I'm a pilot myself, so my dream is to one day fly a P-51 Mustang or a Corsair, so hopefully one day we can do that. Uh, just behind the camera off to the right, there's also a C-47 that we fly and give rides in. Maybe I'll start flying that first because that's usually where we jump into. Uh, but overall, this is a wonderful museum. Our flyable aircraft, we have our P-51D model, which we have a back seat in, so you can go for a ride in that. Our C-47, which we sell rides in. Uh, the T-33 trainer jet, which is our most expensive bird. And then the T-28 trainer, which was a Vietnam-era single-engine um, trainer, um, radial-engine trainer. Uh, the other one we fly is called a P-63 King Cobra. Uh, it's not a seller for rides, it's only a single passenger airplane, it actually has the engine in the back, it's a very unique design made by Bell Aircraft. Uh, we didn't really like those airplanes during the war, so we gave most of them to the Russians. So that means there's not a lot of them left in the United States that are still flying or even static examples, and we're lucky enough to have one that does fly. Just last year we took it up to Reno and raced it. It was the first time in I think 40 years that there was a P-63 that raced in uh, Reno. Didn't do that well, but it's still, we were proud to have it there. Uh, and it was a showstopper because everybody really enjoyed seeing it. Uh, we also raced our P-51 there as well, so. Okay, so uh, my background of airplanes, I fly, uh, there's a couple different Satabrias I've flown, a couple different Aronka Champs. Uh, the Champ was probably one of my favorites because it didn't have an electrical system in it, no radios, no starter, you had to hand prop it to start it, so that was a lot of fun. I got my tail dragger endorsement in that. Uh, I've flown P uh, Piper Arrow, which is what I got my complex, and a 182, which is what I got my high performance in. I fly still the 182, a couple 172s, and then I have a good buddy who flies a Cirrus, and I fly a lot with him uh, in the Cirrus. Uh, and I have two hours of log time in a multi-engine airplane, and it was actually a PBY Catalina, which I had a rare opportunity to go for a ride in one of those. And my dad being a flight instructor, uh, he got me to sit in the left seat for a little while and he logged me some time, so I have two hours logged in a PBY. So that's pretty much the background of what I've flown. Like I said, my dream is one day to fly a P-51, but uh, I just love flying airplanes. Airplanes are wonderful. They're just fun to fly. Good time. They're just terribly expensive. They're, they're terribly expensive. It's the most expensive hobby. We are getting an F-117. They have been recently retired by the Air Force. Um, basically, we have one that is reserved for the Palm Springs Air Museum. We are unable to get it until we have room to store it. They don't want to keep them outside, so they're building a Quonset hut down in the south end of the field so we can keep it in storage. And when we get it, basically it's going to be a full example of an F-117 minus the nose and the tail. Those are still classified by the U.S. government, so when we get those, our restoration team, our wonderful magicians, the restoration team, will have to fabricate a nose and a tail to keep it going, uh, just to make it look just like it, uh, it did when it was flying. So it won't be, it's not going to be a flyer though, that's for sure. That'll be, that'll be a static display, but that will be really cool looking. So that guy's great, isn't he? So again, I don't have any discount or coupon codes. Uh, I, that's not the reason I made the video. I'm just hugely passionate about aviation, especially military aviation, and the opportunity to visit the museum. Uh, I couldn't resist bringing my camera equipment. Uh, big thank you to Ann. I messaged her ahead of time saying, hey, I've got this little YouTube channel. I'm huge into aviation. I'd love to bring my stuff over and come check out the museum. She said, no problem. We'll get you some VIP passes. So thank you very much. So that wraps up another video. I hope you guys have the opportunity, once all this travel ban stuff is gone, to go check out the museum and be sure to tell the staff, hey, I saw a video about this and, uh, you know, share where you found out about it. As always, you can follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, and of course the website where nerdyiscool.com. I thank you guys for watching. Stay safe with this coronavirus going around. Make sure you wash your hands 20 seconds, you know, sing happy birthday, all that stuff. Stay safe, and hey, if you're gonna be hanging out at the house or if you're in a quarantine, watch some videos. So as always, thanks for watching, and remember, this is where nerdy is cool.